Um, as, uh, as Jeremy said, my name is Eleanor Bosch. I'm here with um, CSEM in Switzerland. Um, I wanna give a big thank you to Epic for including us in this series of talks. Um, and a thank you to my fellow presenters. Um, it's been really interesting to see all of your presentations and, and wonderful to learn from all of you today. Um, I have the distinct pleasure of presenting our flash LiDAR technology. Um, I'll largely be focused on this prototype system that we've been developing here at CSEM over the last few years. Um, in the meantime, we have ongoing developments to kind of augment the technology readiness, readiness level of this system. Um, but what I have for you today is largely focused on this, this nice prototype. Um, Want to advance? There we go. Uh, to give you a little bit of background about CSCM, um, we're a technology transfer center located in Switzerland. Uh, the majority of our employees are here in Neuchâtel, um, but we have locations all over the country. Um, we kind of sit between academia and the in-house research that we do um, and the Swiss industry. So we're working to get technologies up to the level that they can be transferred out um, and used in real life applications. Uh, we've been around for 40 years as of this year. Um, we have over 600 employees, about uh, just over a million in turnover as of last year, um, and a continuously growing uh, patent portfolio, um, as well as growing number of startups that have uh, spun out of CSEM and started within, uh, within the walls here. So the group that uh, contains the flash LiDAR imaging group um, has a number of um, other kind of industries that we cover. So this um, includes quite a number of um, industries in space, um, high precision mechanisms, advanced additive manufacturing, um, advanced control and micro vibrations. Um, and then we have our time and frequency uh, specialties located in the same group as well. So people working on miniature atomic clocks and stabilized lasers, um, frequency combs. Um, and then there's us with the, alongside the FMCW LiDAR group and, uh, and us, the flash imaging LiDAR group. Uh, the expertise that we've developed here at CSEM is in the system design and, and integration of flash LiDAR technologies where um, we target a specific application and then we develop a LIDAR that's going to meet the, the specific requirements there. So we started with LIDARs for space um, and hopefully you can see in the top right corner here um, is an image that was taken from um, a system that has launched into orbit. Uh, it was up there in 2018 for the remove debris mission um, and that was targeting space debris uh, being able to identify it and capture it and remove it. Um, so they had our LIDAR uh, along with them. And you can see we took this really nice depth map image of a satellite while we were up there. Um, and then down in the bottom left of that image, you can see a, a camera shot of that same satellite. Um, so we develop our LIDARs generally to be quite compact um, with high spatial resolution. Um, Using a green laser, we've been able to transfer into the bathymetry industry as well. Um, a couple of the applications that, that we've been involved in are archaeological site surveys um, and marine and geological system surveys. Uh, one of the ongoing projects just here in the lake, uh, basically next to the office, is um, the monitoring of the evolution of an erosion line that we're able to do by repeatedly scanning um, over the same terrain and monitoring changes that, uh, that are interesting to um, people who want to see the evolution of the, the underwater terrain. Um, it seems we have a pretty LiDAR aware community here in the audience, so I won't spend too much time describing direct time of flight, um, but I'll quickly touch on the kind of distinct feature of our LiDAR, which is that is it's a flash system. Um, and what this means is that with every laser pulse, we're illuminating the entire field of view that our detector is able to see rather than gathering a single point at a time. Um, what we then do is collect timing data from every single pixel, which was exposed to the backscatter um, from the scene in front of us. And then um, we do that uh, even hundreds of times in order to get um, uh, a histogram of data over the time range that we were measuring. Um, and we detect uh, 
uh, the sort of peak in that histogram to determine the depth at which your target is sitting. Um, that histogram data is really rich with information. So it's also possible to export all of that um, because it, it might be interesting in some cases to look at multiple echoes um, or to look at the water column um, and really understand what's going on with the full range of backscatter that we're seeing um, in front of us. Um, I'll just focus on the, the specifications described here for our um, prototype system. We, uh, we managed to make it quite small, 20 by 20 by 20 centimeters and six and a half kilograms. Um, but we didn't really aim for an optimization of size, weight, and power because this was a system where we wanted to be able to make some modifications based on the conditions that we were measuring in. Um, so an example of that is you can see that um, in the field of view row there that we have an adjustable field of view. Um, and this actually takes a big hit on our weight and size because without that adjustable field of view, we can make quite a bit smaller of a system. But what it allows us to do is sort of monitor how um, the behavior of the system and the reflections from the environment uh, change as we uh, modify these parameters. So we can either optimize for a given situation or test out how each of these things work, um, given what we're interested in measuring and the amount of time we want to spend on the water. Um, the sensor resolution we have in this system is 128 by 128 um, pixels. And we do that by tiling, um, I'll show you an image of this in a couple of slides. We tile two by two SPAD detectors, um, which are each 64 by 64 pixels. Ah, sorry, and we were able to achieve most recently um, about 15 centimeters of range precision um, when we were measuring around five meters in water. And that's completely raw without any um, spatial averaging or anything like that. Um, so as I said, we focus on the system design. Um, if you look down in the bottom left corner, there's an image of the focal plane array with those two by two detectors that I mentioned. Um, so each detector is 64 by 64 pixels, as mentioned. A nice feature of these um, single photon avalanche detector arrays is that they're only um, electrically connected on two sides. And that's what enables this doubling of resolution in both directions. Um, that's pretty unique for SPAD technology. You don't see a lot of um, developers taking this approach, but we were able to really take advantage of that for this system. Um, then we have a couple of nice features that we've integrated to improve um, the, the signal, whether it's um, multiple echoes, as I mentioned before, we can export the entire histogram for all of our pixels, um, provided you have uh, the bandwidth to accommodate that. Um, or we can export simply the, the most prominent peak in the data. Um, then we have a time gating feature, which enables us to filter out unwanted backscatter signal. Um, and then as I mentioned, we have this adjustable field of view. So for this prototype system, uh, we can modify uh, what area we're looking at, which is gonna have a really big impact on um, how quickly you can take data over a large area, or alternatively as a trade-off, um, how far you can see um, ahead of the detector. Um, as has been mentioned, I think a number of times by people here is that the data throughput on our under, on underwater systems is quite limited. So what we've done is enabled um, onboard processing of these um, time of flight histograms, excuse me. <coughs> Um, and this we do in order to reduce the amount of data that we pipe off of the system. Um, it means that you know, there's less information contained. We might return just a single uh, one of those target returns or um, a couple of them, um, but that enables uh, a lot more um, kind of throughput of information for um, the survey. Here's a couple of images that we took. Um, this was actually a couple of years ago. Um, what you're looking at in the top image is a camera um, capture from, I think, a GoPro of the edge of a wooden boat. Um, it's a special wooden boat because it's uh, from Roman times. And they found it underwater here in Neuchâtel. Um, 
And they since took it out, built a model of it and sunk it again so that um, it can be observed. Um, and in our case, we were able to take a survey of it uh, with our LIDAR. So you can see in the bottom image, um, these nice depth map um, captures from the edge of the boat where the edge of the boat is very clearly visible. Um, you can see kind of that drop down from around three and a half meters to much closer to four meters down next to the boat. Um, and then you can see some of the features of uh, the wood on top of the boat as well. I'm losing my voice. Um, here's another set of data that we took just last year. Um, all we've really done here is stitched uh, the point cloud together. So again, not, not much spatial averaging. We wanted to kind of keep all of the detailed features. Um, but this is a ship that has been intentionally sunk in Lac Neuchâtel for the scuba diving club. We were able to take advantage of um, that choice in order to uh, have a, a test site for our LIDAR as well. So you can see um, these depth images that we took off of the front of the ship here. <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, we're continuously improving on this technology. One of the things that we're most looking forward to is the um, outcome of the validation of a new sensor that's um, developed also by the Fondazione Bruno Kessler in Italy. Um, this sensor has 256 by 256 pixels. So that's again, doubling our resolution um, along both dimensions. So really a high resolution sensor um, and a brand new kind of technology for um, SPAD sensing chips. They've integrated um, within the layers of their uh, transistor logic, some really nice features for um, uh, bathymetric applications specifically. Um, and as I said, it's under test right now. So we're really looking forward to how it performs. That's all that I have for today. Thank you so much for your time and for staying with me through the end of this series of presentations. Um, I look forward to welcoming your questions. Um, and of course, uh, I should mention that CSCM is absolutely open to opportunities for partnerships in this space. Um, and we're so glad to have been included in this series of talks.